that has made us to gather here. We have not gathered in the name of any man, not in the name of any general overseer, not in the name of any pastor, but in the name of Jesus Christ, our King. In that understanding and with that understanding, let's go ahead and begin to exalt the name of Jesus. We exalt the name of Jesus above every other name. Lord, we exalt that name above every other name, above every other being. All other gods are the works of man. All other gods, they have eyes they cannot see. They have ears they cannot hear. They have mouth they cannot speak. But we have a God who died and on the third day he resurrected. We have a God who has given us hope. The Bible says, if Jesus has not resurrected, our faith will have been useless. But Father, we thank you for the resurrection. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your resurrection power. We thank you. We glorify you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. We worship you. Male branda la nosara. Ele branda rama kuli nere nele branda rama sho. Eri brada la deri marando lo brono no momo sana la ma. There is no other name like a God. You reign, you rule forevermore. You are God alone by yourself. We worship, we worship, we worship you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. The lifter of our head, the rising king, the bright and the morning star, the rose of Sharon, the first and the last, the one who is and who is to come, the one who is our maker, our help, our strength, our defense, our righteousness, our provider, the burden bearer, the lily of the valley, the one who is and who is to come, the bright and the morning star, Jehovah Rapha is your name. Jehovah Roy is your name. Jehovah Sikenu is your name. Jehovah Shalom is your name. Jehovah Mekadiskia is your name. Jehovah Roy is your name. The God who reigns forever. The God who reigns forever. The God who is and who is to come. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for bringing us together again in your presence tonight. Thank you because we have come into your presence where we can draw strength. We have come into your presence where we can be saved. We have come into your presence where we can be redeemed. We have come into your presence where we can be chastised. We have come into your presence where our life can be renewed. We have come into your presence where our life can be restored by the reason of your word. Let that word, O oh God, tonight, as we gather, let it find expression in the heart of everyone that comes into your presence. Let your word come convict us. Let your word convict us. Let your word convict us. Jesus, you are good and your mercy is forever. Alleluia. Forever, Alleluia. 
that you are good you are kind you are reliable you are faithful you are you are everything to us dependable god reliable god trustworthy god the lifter up of our head ah the burden bearer the one who can fight our battles the one who goes before us and make the crooked way straight the one who goes before us by the pillar of cloud by day and by the pillar of fire by night we worship you oh god tonight lord we know that your word will find the expression in our heart as we gather this morning let your grace oh god be released let your spirit take charge of every activity and everyone that you will use oh god tonight let them be an oracle oh god to bring forth your mind and your intention oh god be revealed unto us this morning thank you because you've answered blessed be your name forever in jesus name we pray amen still in the attitude of worship let's begin to bless the name of the lord let's worship him let's bless his holy name let's thank him for what he has done let's thank him for he has always been our god he has never left us he has never forsaken us for once even at times that we think that he is not by our side he's always there let's just appreciate him let's give him all the glory and all the adoration thank you jesus for who you are for who you are to me Matchless love and beauty and bless us. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that one won dry. Silver is like you, Lord. Match this love and beauty and this world. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you. 
his holy name and adore him glorify his holy name father we worship you there is no one like you jesus you are worthy to be praised you are almighty all sufficient we worship you we give you all the glory lord there is no one like you oh we give you all the glory we give you honor we give you all the glory. We give you honor. Honor. We give you all the glory. Lord, we give you. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Oh, one more time. I'm 
we thank you. Hey, we declare that you are the Lord. We declare that there is no one like you. We have searched the heaven and the earth. There is no one like you. Daddy, we just say thank you. Oh, Daddy, we worship you. We bow before your throne. We bow before your throne. Hey, we worship at your feet. We declare that you are the glorious God. And we know that we can never find anyone like you. Without you, there is no man. We are nothing without you. Therefore, we present ourselves to you, Lord. Lord Almighty, bless our hearts today. Let your words come forth with power. Let your word come forth to heal. Let your word come forth to deliver. Let your word come forth to save. And let your name be glorified. That at the, at the end of it all, you take all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Shake hands with your neighbor and welcome your neighbor to church. You're welcome. You're welcome. God bless you, sir. You're welcome. God bless you, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. It's an awesome time in the presence of God again. And we are looking at God the Father this week. This is Bible studies. So um, we may be doing some uh, more of the Bible reading. Sir, we may be doing some more of the Bible reading this evening. And um, let's start with Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And we are talking today about the all-sufficient God. How many of you know God as the all-sufficient God? If you know God is the all-sufficient God, shout Hallelujah. Yes, that's it. That's the spirit. God, the all-sufficient God. Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. The part we want to talk today is, we don't want the other part, that I am the almighty God. The all-sufficient God. This is God coming to man to introduce himself to man, saying, this is who I am. I am the almighty God. You see, despite God coming to Abraham and saying, I am the almighty God, it shows that I can do everything for you. I can do anything. I can do all things. That is what it means. But we still see Abraham messing up in Genesis chapter 16 verse 1. When Abraham's wife came and met him and said, oh, we need a child. Go into um, Haggai. And let's have a child. Abraham, God is almighty. God has promised you seed. God has promised you many things. We still see Abraham responding to the wife's request. Disobeying God. Which means Abraham had limited knowledge of what God came to tell him. That he is the almighty God. He doesn't understand fully what that almighty God means. He was limited in his knowledge of God. You see, God came again and introduced himself to um, Isaac. To Isaac. When God came to Isaac, in Genesis 26, from verses 2 to 5, he said, I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham. And I, I am God. You understand? So, what, when God was trying, God, that introduction, Isaac's mind, everything in Isaac's mind is, it is how God has operated with my father that he will operate with me. So, there was limitation in his um, knowledge. They cannot, he can see another dimension now and not believe and say, God did not operate with my father this way, so he may not be operating, this may not be God. You understand? So his mind was limited to the extent that he, get, he got into um, a certain territory and he behaved the same way his father behaved. When the father told them, Sarah, okay, this is your, um, say you are my sister and this. Isaac did the same thing. Why? Because he's walking in the similitude of how, how his father has walked. We see the same thing with Jacob. You understand? His knowledge was limited. That's why if you see the way Jacob lived his life, he lived a life of deception. We are coming. We are going somewhere. So this is just to introduce you to the fact that God introduced himself to this man. You understand? 
But despite this introduction, they still have limited knowledge of God's operation, of who God is in, when he says, I am the almighty God. So he got to a time when God wanted to introduce himself fully. He came and met Moses in the bunny bush. Exodus chapter 3. Let's read it. Exodus 3 from verses 13 and 14. Exodus chapter 3, 13 and 14. Exodus 3, 13 and 14. The Bible says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and I shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you. He said, When they ask me what is his name, what will I say to them? If God, if I am to ask you, you understand, you see, you, you, God is saying, Okay, go and deliver these people. I cannot just go by my own self. If I am going there, who will I say send me? And if they ask me what is his name, what will I say is the name of this person that sent me? What, will God, what was God's response? His Bible study, anybody can raise, the, raise up their hand and answer. What was God's response? I am. I am. That I am. I am. Imagine that you come to meet me and say, what's your name? I tell you, I am. Who are you? Who are, that, you see the question, who are you? I am. You understand? That's like a first person pronoun. Saying, okay, I am. But you know what God was doing there? He was giving them the privilege to name him. Do you understand? He was giving them the privilege to say, you will begin to experience me. You will begin to encounter me. And based on that, you will, call, you will see what I am. You will see who I am. God did not place a limit on himself. Oh, maybe Abraham has known me as the God that blessed. Because when God came to meet Abraham, God told Abraham, he said, I will bless you. Abraham's knowledge is blessing. He did not believe the fact that God can provide a child from an old man. Or from an old woman. He has, his knowledge is limited to that capacity. So he believes in the blessing because of course he has seen the blessing. But God said, I will begin to prove myself. And you will see who I am. God gave us I am as a name. So that we will go and experience and encounter him. And then we will fill in the gap. I am came with a gap. We fill the missing gap, the missing thing. And that thing that is missing, in the, it not depends on your own experience and your own encounter with God. Calling himself I am was an attempt to give us the opportunity to name him according to our experience of him. Exodus 15, 26. God, you see, when, Mo, when God gave Moses I am, he said, go and tell the people of Israel, over time, the people of Israel now began to encounter who God is. And by their self, they began to name God. If you read the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, God revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha when they were looking for water to drink. But the water they found was bitter. Moses had to pluck something and throw it inside the water. And the water was sweet, was normal. And then Moses, um, God revealed himself there as the one who can heal them when they are thirsty, the one who can provide. I don't know why they use the word healing there, but when I read that passage, I saw that God said, I am Jehovah Rapha. There was a part when Gideon was the one that named God himself. He came to God. After God came to meet him, God said, when God came to meet him, he said, I, he said you are Jehovah Shalom. And God said, yes, I am. Jehovah Shalom. Gideon was the one that said that, not God. God did not tell him, I am Jehovah Shalom. It was Gideon that saw it himself and said, you are Jehovah Shalom because you want to restore peace to Israel. You understand? We also see the fact that Samuel, Samuel, he erected the stone and said, you are Ebenezer. He called God Ebenezer. Why? Because then, I think it was in a place where he, he, he erected the stone or something like that and when he erected the stone, he I think the stone was victory. Ebenezer means victory. There was a victorious happening that happened there and someone said he is Jehovah Ebenezer. You understand? We also see the place where God has done many things. He provided manna. They said he is what? Jehovah the provider. Who can tell me what Jehovah the provider means in the Hebrew word? Jehovah Jireh. There was a place where Moses Moses had to, they lifted the hand of Moses. Hor and someone else, Aaron, held the hand of Moses up. After that encounter, they won the battle and they came back and said, you are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Jesus, every time they name God this, God claims it, yes, I am, to complete it, I am Jehovah Nisi. So that was an opportunity given to us. So if I ask you today, 
What have you named God based on your own personal encounter and your own personal experience? Do you have a name for God? Personally, has God done something for you that you will see that this is what I will name him? You see, sometimes when I go to God in prayer, I reflect on my life. I see where I'm coming from. And I began, I, be, I began to, that's how I pray. That's how I stayed there for a long time praying. I see where I'm coming from and I say, oh God, you have done this. You are Jehovah that can do this. You see, when you hear Jehovah the provider and you don't understand, you have not seen it in your life. You may not be able to express reaching out to him as Jehovah the provider. You need to take time and go back to your... You think the truth is that you need to take time and go back and reflect on what God has done for you and use it to begin to reach out to him and say, this is what you have done. This is what you have done. You are Jehovah this. You are Jehovah that. He is not limited. That's why he gave Moses. He said, you will see. Just go. Take this one and go and meet them. You will begin to see as time goes on. So what can you say God has done for you and you have named him according to that? Hallelujah. You see, one man, one person that has a great encounter with God and named him so many in songs, you know, David, he named him in songs, he named him everything. He named God different things that you never knew of. David gave God those names. That's why we are going to be studying Psalm 23. You see, I want to give you direction where you should look for God and name him. There are some aspects God works. David came and introduced him to us that way. In Psalm 23, maybe, maybe you just say that's prayer. But David was telling you this is the thing God can do in your life. He was showing you that this is who God can be. When he said, I am, it is within the confines of this scripture, within the confines of this book. God can do all of these things. He experienced him and he said, this is who God can be. He was personalizing it, but at the same time, he was telling you that this is who and what God can be. Let's go to Psalm 23, please. Psalm 23. Please, media, you have to help me. Psalm chapter 23. We'll start from verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. David began the scripture by saying, this scripture by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. If you think who a shepherd is, imagine one person at the front and then flocks of sheep following this person. And then the Bible makes us understand that when a lion came for the sheep, David went there as a shepherd that he is. He went there and fought off the lion. And Jesus made us to understand that. He said, when the lion comes for the sheep, he said, the one who is a thief, the one who, who, who is not a real shepherd, who does not care, will flee. He said, but the real shepherd will what? Stand and fight for the sheep. So God being your shepherd is that God can be your father. It is a father-son relationship. It is a father-son relationship that David was trying to describe when he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He, will, he, he himself has been a shepherd. He knew how to, he fought a bear. He fought a lion for his sheep. So he came and tell you that God can be your shepherd. A father-son relationship. The one who will be at the front and you will follow his footstep. The one who when the lion comes, the one who when the bear comes, he will fight for you to the end. That is what David was trying to explain. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. God can be your shepherd. Have you understand God as a shepherd? Have you come to realize that God is a father that will fight, that will go to the nail for you? The Lord is my shepherd. Say to yourself, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord will fight for me. The Lord will go extra miles for me. As a father will do for a child, God will do for me. The Bible said, he said, who, who will have a son? And the son will come and ask him bread. And he will give the son what? Um, stone. Or the son will come and ask him for fish. And he will give the son serpent. Who? Which kind of father will do that? Jesus was making an example in the Bible. He said, this woman kept running to this man. Help me fight my cause. He said, the man did not fight his cause. He kept running. I said, one day the man, I said, so that this woman will not wear me out. Let me just fight her cause. But he said, how much more your father in heaven? How much more your father, your shepherd in heaven? Have you recognized God as a father? Do you know him? Have you encountered him as a father? Now, imagine what your earthly father can do for you. 
You understand how much more God the Father. So this is a call for you to go back and reflect. Have I really approached you as a father? Or am I just seeing you as God? The other people of the world, they think he's God. But we see him as father. The Lord is my shepherd. And for that reason, he said, I shall not want. The Bible does Psalm 23, please. He said, I shall not want. What does that mean? God is a provider. God is a provider. See, let me tell you, God can go against standards to provide for you. It has, it has never happened that we hear that manna fell from heaven. But when his children needed, manna has to fall. When Jesus cried and said, Father, we thank you for this. The bread multiplied, miracle, just to make sure that they have what they want. Was it not written in the Bible? They did not. Peter only had to go to the sea and, and, and throw his hook and he caught fish and he brought money out of the mouth of the fish. Because why? His children were in need. Could it be our fault that we have not approached God as the God who provides? Maybe there is lack, we know. In this country, we know the kind of lack that there is now. But have you understood that there was a time in Benin Republic when I gave my life to Christ. Things were very difficult because I stopped internet scam where I used to get money. There were no food to eat. But you know what happened? There was never a day that I did not eat something. Even if it is once in a day. God knows how to show up. He knows how to provide. Rely on him. Within the point, within that place where God will show up, from near to where God will show up, the devil is in the middle, remember. He will come and suggest to you. And once you deviate, maybe you are supposed to pass here. Maybe you are supposed to pass here to meet God to provide for you here. The devil will come and meet you and say, pass here, there is a solution here. Once you pass here, you will get here and you will not, you, what you will find will, will cause you pain and sorrow. And then you will not be crying that God has not provided. When you did not take the straight line, you were not patient enough to get to where God wants you to be to see what he has to provide. Hallelujah. Say, God is my provider. I will wait for him. No matter what I will wait. The widow of Zarafa said, I want to eat the last one and go and kill myself. Whereas God was preparing Elijah in one place. Oh yeah, hurry up, hurry up, go and meet her. It was not about Elijah. Elijah was hungry, but there are many people that could have fed Elijah. It was about the fact that one woman needed provision at that time. And God said, Elijah, yeah, this is where you should go to. He can provide. If it takes miracle for him to provide, he will provide. I've heard of stories where people were expecting God to show up for them and everything. They they had they, they were expect they didn't have light or anything. They didn't have a, a place to actually charge their phone. The Bible, the guy said, I think it was Apostle Joshua Selman that said it. He said he had his phone. He was praying that Lord, let my phone not die. One bar, I mean the phone was about to die. He said he looked at the phone, the phone started charging itself. Where did the electricity come from? You may think, oh, I'm a lie. But God can perform anything to make anything happen. Did you not read the Bible? The woman that Elisha went and meet, he said, you have just one jar, go and borrow vessels. Where did the rest oil come from? Have you asked yourself? Did the woman go and borrow oil? She borrowed jar and God provided. God is my provider. I will wait for him. No matter what it is. He has done it before. If you have issues, take the stories. Go and meet him. You, it, it, this is partiality. You must do it for me. You did it for these people. Do it for me. Take the stories and go and meet him. He will not deny himself. So I am telling you, hold on to God as the provider. You can go with these stories and he will show up for you. Hallelujah. What was the next thing David said? You can still have some time. Psalm 23, please. He said, I shall not want God the provider. And he said, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. Now, you may think I want to talk about the green pastures. That's not what I want to talk to. I'm concerned about what God does. It's not about the thing. It's not about the object itself. It's about the giver of this thing himself. So, he said, he maketh me lie down. Rest. Rest. In this world of chaos, God can give rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. God will not say the thing he cannot do. He can give you rest. 
Say, God can give me rest. God, say to yourself, God will give me rest. God can give me rest. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 to 22, please. Exodus chapter 13, from verse 21 to 22. After all the torment, after all the going through the wilderness, after all the battles, after everything, the Bible says, and the Lord went before them. Exodus 13, 21 to 22. And the Lord went before them day by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them by the way and by night in a pillar of fire and to give them light by the day and night. Continue. Let's see what it says. And he took not away the pillar of cloud. No, I don't think this is the Bible. This is the passage I'm talking about. There's a part where God said, and God gave them rest. After all the rigorous training, I think I missed it here. I wrote something else. You know, too much studying of the Bible to come and preach. You may miss something. But then, forgive me, go and find it by yourself. When I miss it, I'm not ashamed or I'm not having pride to say I missed it. I missed it. You understand? But the thing is that God can also help me, even here. God can provide scripture for me. You understand? Hallelujah. So, you see what we are talking about is that God can give you rest. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Peace. This is who God is. He is ready to do this. After all the battles, he did it for them. But do you know one great thing that David said there? Come, let me, let's go there, please. Open that Psalm 23 again. One great thing that I want to also point out because I've jumped so many parts because of time. He said, he make me lie down in green pastures. He led me beside still waters. Go to the next one, please. He said, he what? Restored my soul. Restored my soul. This is hope for somebody. You know why this is hope for somebody? Because in this journey of faith, one day we will fall. One day we, our soul will be downhearted. One day we will do something wrong. And do you know the truth? The devil can capitalize on this thing to take you away from your blessings. David said he restored my soul. He knew what he was talking about. He and Akid, uh, Akid Uriah took his wife. He said he, and God still used him. God, still, God never changed. The show mercy of David. The Bible talks about the show mercy of David. He understood what he was talking about. Some of you think God is the one that will finish and he will kick you out and say, go, you have, you have failed. Because we have heard in the scripture that there are some sins that are unpardonable. We have heard in the scripture that if you do this one, God will reject you. We have seen how God rejected Saul and kicked him out. So we think, oh, we have done something very bad. And then, let me tell you what Peter did. He denied Jesus. You and I have not seen Jesus face to face. Peter was with him days, but still he denied Jesus. But do you know what God did? What Jesus did when he came back? Let's open to the book of John chapter 21. John 21, we read from verse 15 and 17. John 21, 15 and 17. He said, so when they are dying, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? One, he said unto him, Lord, I love thee. He said unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said, feed my lambs. Go again to the next verse. He asked him again in verse 16. He said, he said to him again second time Simon son of Jonah lovest thou me he said unto him yeah Lord thou knowest that I love thee said, feed my sheep God said to him again verse 17 again please he has said unto him the third time Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time lovest thou me and he said unto him Lord thou knowest all things thou knowest that I love thee Jesus said unto him how many times three times how many times did Peter deny Jesus Jesus restored him back. Jesus made him confess his love back to him again. Three times. You have denied me three times. No wahala. I am here to restore you again three times. You think it was just... Jesus was doing something. They're asking him again. Do you love me more than this? Say yes. Okay. Ask, do you love me? Three times. Was it not three times he denied him? He can restore you. It doesn't matter how many times you have denied him. That is who he is. That is what he wants to do. He said, if one of, remember I said he's the shepherd, and he said something in the scripture. He said, if one of the sheep strays away, what will happen? I will leave the 99 and pursue that one. What kind of God is that? I have 99, but I will leave that one and pursue after you. So who make you, who is making you think that you have done worse and you cannot be used? Who is making you think that this God is not merciful? Hallelujah. Oh Lord, my God. 
I don't know if we know that uh, hymn. When I know wonders, choir, please, if you can help me. Consider all the works thy hand but me. Please help me, choir. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy path throughout thy universe is made. Then sings my soul. Then God can restore me. Say it to yourself. God can restore me. No matter how far I have gone, God can restore me. God can restore you. I think because of time we should stop here and pray. I have many things written here, but because of time, let's just stop here. I know it's Bible study, but it is important. When God is doing some things, we need to follow his footsteps. Lord, you can restore. Lord, you can restore. By your head, Bow your head and talk to God. You are the God that restored David. There are many people. You have had dreams about yourself. You have seen what God wants you to do. God has shown you things about yourself. But you don't see it happening. And you have gone the wrong way. Say, God, you can restore. God, you can restore. God, you can restore. God, you can restore. Lord, restore me. Lord, restore me. Restore me. Prayer. Stop praying. Lord, restore me. Restore me, Lord. Restore me. Restore me, Jesus. Restore me. Have I gone astray? Please restore me. Have I gone away? Please restore me. You said you will go after the one. Please restore me. That anointing, please restore me. Jesus, restore me. Restore me. Restore me, Lord. Please restore me. Restore me. Restore me. Lord, I need your restoration. I need your restoration, Lord. Restore me. Upon this altar today, we cry out to you, Lord. Father, restore me. Stand up and pray, brethren. Stand up and pray to God. Father, restore me. Some of you carry glory upon your head, but the devil wants to steal it. Remember, the devil does not go to where there is no glory. Bible said he came to steal, to kill and destroy. But adventure we have allowed him. Father, restore me. Jesus, restore me. Have mercy and restore me. Have mercy and restore me. Have mercy and restore me. Lord, restore me. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. I know this is Bible studies. But please, I talked about some things that some people know that they are supposed to be great. But along the line, if you know, I'm not talking about unbelievers coming to give their life to Christ now. If you know that at one point you have allowed the devil to steal you away and you don't know how to come back, even me, I will come back. I will come out. Please come out and let our pastor pray for you. If at one point you know that you have stepped out, you know where God wants you to be going to, but then at one point you have stepped out, please come outside. Let the pastor pray for you. Please come outside. Let the pastor pray for you. This is a great opportunity for you. The spirit of God is in the house. Please come outside. You know that you carry glory and anointing on your head. But then you know that this world is trying to steal you away from it. Please come outside now. 
this is an opportunity for you to come outside. And pastor, we pray for you. Come outside now. Please, all eyes closed. Come outside. It's not a prayer for you to come and give your life to Christ. It's a prayer for restoration. It's a prayer for restoration. Please, come outside. Come outside. Is it ministry? Is it whatever it is? Come out. Let God settle it now. Please come outside. You still have the opportunity to come outside. There is still time. It is not too late for you to leave your destiny. It is not too late. You know you need that restoration because you, you know in your heart that one or two things have happened. The Spirit of God is ready to settle it now. Please come outside. Let God settle it now. Father, we worship. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Give you all the worship. Give you all the worship. Father, we worship. Give you all the Brethren, let's go ahead. Continue to pray. Continue to pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. The Spirit of God is convicting right now. The Spirit of God is convicting men and women. Mercy is saying no. Mercy is saying no this moment. The mercy of God is saying no. The mercy of God is saying no this moment. The mercy of God will not let you go away completely. The mercy of God is bringing restoration this moment. The mercy of God is bringing restoration that you will need this moment. The mercy of God is doing the work in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Mercy say no. I will never let you go. I will never. Mercy say. Mercies, yes, yes, Lord. Mercy, mercy, the mercy of God is saying no. You will not draw from the hand of God. Amen. You will not draw from his pathway. Amen. The mercy of God is keeping you in that pathway. Amen. The mercy of God is setting things right Amen. tonight. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your mercy. The restorer of our souls. Our father. Our daddy. The one that cannot watch us to go astray completely. The one who loves us so dearly. Thank you Jesus for paying the price. Thank you. Your children have come out this evening. They have come out. They have come out. Father, let there be total restoration. Complete restoration. In the name of Jesus. From tonight like never before. Because they came out tonight. Let their lives radiate your glory like never before Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. keep them in your love 
Let them continue to walk with you. Never to depart. Never to come short of your plans and your purposes for their lives. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will keep you. From now, shall be from glory to glory. Your assignment here on earth, you will do it and you will complete it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's clap for Jesus. Brethren, God bless you. Go back to your seat. Thank you. Oh, let's clap for Jesus for the word that we have had tonight. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What a word. What a word. Hallelujah. Let me say one or two things also. That the enemy will not trouble your life if you don't have anything that he, he, has to, he needs to steal. If you don't carry something, the devil will not trouble you. He will leave you like that. He will not be interested in you. But if you carry something that matters, he will do everything possible. But God has a way of guiding and guarding and preserving. Hallelujah. You know, I also got something when he was speaking. The book of John chapter 10, right, chapter, chapter 6 now, verse 10. Jesus told the people, told the disciples, make the people sit down. You know, when he wanted to feed them with bread and all of that. He said, make them, make the men sit down. Then, the scripture that he quoted in the book of Psalms, Psalm 23, he says, he made me to lie down. I just heard the word. That you see, God, for God to provide for you and I, we don't need to run. To, 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 to. It's not in the, in the jumping up and down. It's not in restlessness. As a matter of fact, the way God walks is in the calmness of the spirit. That he says, this is what I want you to do. This is this. Instructions. Simple instructions. Call this person. Do this. Do this. That's the way it works. Whereas you see many of us, particularly in Nigeria, the first thing you think about is, who do I know? Boom. How many places can I visit in a day? How many streets of Lagos can now walk around? God doesn't work that way. Let's learn something. I believe we have learned something tonight from the word that our brother brought to us through God. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for your son that you used tonight. Lord, we ask that you increase your anointing upon his life. We ask that you fill him with more grace, Amen. more wisdom, Amen. more light Amen. to understand your word more and more in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that that which you have given to him, no devil will be able to take it away. Amen. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'm so glad about something else. That when we started this series, I mentioned something, you remember. I said, I don't want us to look at this topic from the surface. I said, I want us to look at it from another dimension. You know, it is possible when you want to, uh, uh, God is uh, this, and then you look at the characteristics. No, I mentioned something about characteristics that you just look at. He did something about characteristics, but look at the, look at the dimension. So, I bless the name of the Lord that God has been taking us uh, very, very deep. Because some of the things we are hearing now, they are deep. 
To God be the glory. Let's package our offering as we give unto the Lord with thanksgiving tonight. Amen. Thank you because you love us so, so much that you can do anything for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to bring a token to you, to appreciate you, just to say thank you. Father, accept us. Accept our offerings tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you bless the offering of your people. Please, breathe upon our finances. Bless us the more. Bless your church the more. Raise fin your financial secretaries here. In the name of Jesus. Father, we rebuke the devourer in any form. In every life here, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please, you can take your seat for a minute or so. Um, June Divine Revolution comes up on Saturday, 17th, 17th of June, 2023. Time is 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And the theme is the healing stripes. And it's going to take place at the province by the special grace of God. Saturday, this coming Saturday, we have Divine Revolution, theme, the Healing Stripes. Our sisters' conference is here. 24th of June, 2023. Let's all continue to pray about it, please, and plan to attend. Sisters, amen. Our fathers, Hallelujah. Amen. When fathers gather, the building shakes. <laughs> Maybe we'll fortify this one before, before Sunday. <laughs> Our fathers will be having a program Sunday, on Sunday, 18th of June. Just a program. It's Father's Day. It's Father's Day. It's not just a program. It's Father's Day. I want to celebrate fathers. Amen. Amen. And not leaving mothers out. Praise the Lord. So fathers will be having their day on Sunday and also celebrating mothers. So, <laughs> so please, Invite, tell your husband to come. Tell your brother to come. Then tell all the mothers around you to come. That they want to celebrate them somewhere. 
and the place is here. Praise God. God will help us. In the name of Jesus. Even if the gifts that the Father also wants to share, if they are not sufficient, <laughs> men will pray. Multiplication will take place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's rise up for the closing prayer. <laughs> I don't know why Brother Charles is laughing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Let's lift up our hands up. Let's lift and bless the name of the Lord for tonight. We shall continue to love in this church. In the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands and just bless his name. Just bless his name. Thank him for tonight. What a night. What a night. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We bless your name. We adore you. We are so, so grateful. Ah, thank you because you have not left us without a word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your son that you used. Thank you for everyone that came tonight. Thank you for impartation. Thank you for impartation. Thank you. Thank you for restoration. Oh, thank you for your visitation, Lord. Thank you. Take the glory. Take the honor. Take adoration. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Papa. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for visiting us tonight. Thank you for blessing us with your word. Thank you for granting us open heavens. Thank you for granting your son utterance. Thank you. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. Cause the words we have heard tonight to continue to ring in our hearts, Amen. in our minds, Amen. as we go home in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, let these words never leave us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God of heaven, we pray. Cause the word to prosper in our lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Until we become better men and women. For you and to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we go, let your presence go with us. Amen. Bless us as we go. Amen. Bless our going out and the coming in. Amen. In the many days of this week. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The miracles that we need. Release into our hands. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Without stress, Lord. Without stress, Lord. Amen. Every miracle that we need. We take delivery of them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. Thank you for our nation, Nigeria. Thank you for granting Nigeria a new beginning. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, before we share the grace, do we record, this, our, do we record our messages in this church? Online. So we can get it online. Okay. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Jesus Christ love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely you shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And then if you want to go Facebook and um, YouTube. I don't know if I have uh, and Facebook. So you can go back to our messages and listen again and again. Praise the Lord. God bless you.